Uh, as a woman who uh, is a business and who runs a company that's very committed to diversity and opportunity, you know, it's really important to me that we at Evanston are doing things like the whole program. So I hope that I can offer some lessons and insights from my own career path. Um, as Karen said, I do live here in Evanston, very close by. I uh, love it here. I've been here since about 1985. I was actually born on the south side of Chicago um, in what is, what is now Inglewood. I was born and grew up there, moved out to the suburbs when I was like in high school, and I came up in a family with six kids. Um, and I'm a first generation college graduate, and uh, all my, even actually not even all my siblings went to college. So I feel like I can relate to the notion of creating your own path. And it's something that I took for granted because in the world that I grew up in, everybody was in that same situation. So I didn't know until I got out into the broader world that, you know, a lot of people come from a lot of different kinds of backgrounds and situations. And I'll never forget the first time I met somebody whose grandfather went to college. I was shocked by that. I had never met anybody whose grandparents went to college. But, you know, I, so what I did is I went to University of Illinois at Chicago, which was formerly known as Circle, which you have to be around in Chicago a long time to know it by that name. We don't call it that anymore. Uh, but I went to that school because, frankly, it was a great education for a great, a great buck. And I was able to, I lived at home for a couple of years, and then I moved into an apartment, and between student loans and working time, that you could actually put yourself in college and not come out with a ton of debt, but I mean, some debt that I had to pay for a while, but it was pretty manageable for me. And I, I knew I wanted to be in, I, I knew I wanted to and needed to get into something right away that I could make a living. So business seemed to appeal to me, and I met somebody who worked in marketing, and that was interesting. And my minor was in Asian studies, because when I was in high school, I was an exchange student in Japan. Uh, first summer. So I took as many, just like the women in this program are doing, I tried to find every opportunity that I could to learn, to differentiate myself, you know, to, to really grow. So because of that, I decided that I might be interested in studying, you know, Asian studies. So I studied Japanese uh, language for a couple years and Chinese and Japanese history, which really never came into handy until about, you know, literally five years ago. So first I was back in Japan with McDonald's and I was really trying to impress the president of McDonald's Japan with my Japanese. He was so not impressed. So anyway, so I started, I got very lucky. Again, I think this, this um, combination of, of, of creating your own opportunities and sometimes luck happens with jumping on those. I was hired at the Quake Roads Company out of undergraduate school and in this marketing training program. And I knew right away that this is exactly what I wanted to do. And I was trying hard to figure out how I could get there. And I, you know, because I wasn't going to the kind of school that they would recruit from, that they ever recruited. Frankly, and so got my resume. It's a long story, but I worked hard to get my resume in front of the right person who brought me in for an interview. And he said, "You definitely, there's nothing wrong with the University of Illinois at Chicago." He said, "But we don't recruit there." And uh, you know, but I see from your resume that you're the kind of person who I think has what it takes to be successful in this environment. So I'll bring you back in to let you interview. You know, go through the whole gauntlet of interviews and see what happens. And, I, and honestly, the good thing is I had no idea what I was up against. Like I was pretty naive, and I didn't realize. That, that was a long shot, but he was he was an interesting person that looked beyond the branding, right, and said, okay, I'm, I see a person here who has the potential. So I got hired, and after a short amount of time, I literally figured out that I was the first person ever hired in this program that didn't have an Ivy League undergraduate degree. <laughs> like, not kidding. And, and, and it was either, so they hired like 30 people a year, uh, 25 people out of business schools, top business schools um, in the country, and then about five people out of undergraduate school, and they were typically from just a handful of schools. It was really just having my antenna up, and, mm -hmm. and it's the same principle still holds today, which is, you know, you have to just look for every opportunity. And so I, I, I had a friend who worked at Quaker, and I, I knew what she did, and I just met her socially, and it sounded really interesting, you know, the job of brand man, being a brand manager just sounded interesting. And so, you know, I worked through her to just, you know, ask her to get my resume to somebody. So again, this notion of relying on people to help you, is, you know, I had no contacts, I had no network, okay, and I certainly didn't go to school to recruit it from, but I saw an opportunity and I pushed it. And then when she then got it to that right person, this person in HR who was open enough to different, you know, kind of paradigms about who to hire, that part was lucky, I'll be honest with you. I think I got very lucky that he was willing to look at this resume and go, okay, I'll, I'll, and, and the fact that somebody internally had asked him to look at it. So that thing about, you know, when you get somebody, you have to bug people to get your, you know, send the resume five times and have somebody look at it, it does, that's how it works. And then I had to show up for that first interview really prepared and, you know, knowledgeable about what it was that I wanted and why, or else he wouldn't have brought me to that next level. Um, you know, U.S. Cellular is um, 
you know, my current position, I've always, I mean, ever since I started on this path, I never, I've never known how far I could take it because I have no role models in my life, that in my family life, that have done what I've done. So I just keep sort of going, hmm, I wonder if. And so at some point in my career, I said, I wonder if I could run a company. That would be really cool because that's most of what I did got me ready for that. And I would just say that, you know, I still, today in running U.S. Cellular, rely on the exact same principles around how, we, how I treat people, what I expect, and how I show up with, you know, humility and flexibility, and hopefully a sense of humor sometimes, too, to try to make our company successful. So just a, a few things I'll, I'll, I'll just advise you guys on, which is this notion of, you know, again, the women who are in this program, stay true to who you are. You guys have tremendous initiative, and I give a lot of, a lot of credit. Uh, for what you're doing and continue to seek the guidance and the event and advice and the help that these mentors around you are giving you because um, I, you know, I really spend, I don't know, what percent of my, my time am I doing things in terms of talking to people and mentoring people. I do it more all the time than, it, you know, more and more smart companies are from this other year. Um, but I believe that people are here, you know, this whole giving it back in terms of what you're getting now and how you give it back. But, but many people here in your lives are really committed to helping your development and your success and you know rely on that and, and then find ways that you can also reciprocate by taking a role in other aspects of the community and folks who might need your help and your support. Um, a lot of people ask me, I, I find it fascinating the role of perceptions about women and women working and work-life balance and women and kids and all this topic and I, I'll just tell you there is no one answer but you know I feel like as women we do have to rely, you know, we have the potential to do whatever we want, and uh, there's a way to figure out pretty much any situation <laughs> that you want to figure out. So when people ask me questions like, gosh, you know, how do you do it all? You have four kids, and you know, well, first of all, my husband's the same all with our kids since our second child was born. And that, that happens to work like really, really well for us. That wouldn't work well for everybody. But the funny thing is that, with all due respect to the, my male colleagues here, nobody asks a man who's got four kids whose wife stays home, gosh, how do you do it all? You know, like men and women all wish, you know, everybody wishes they could be with their families more and have more hours in the day. It's not just our job, right? So, anyways, but I think that, you know, if I go home, if I've done, if I'm doing what I think is the best I can for my family and for my career, I'm not going to let myself get so, like, let self-doubt cripple me because I need to move ahead. I need to, you know, have a career. I need to make money. I want to be successful. So, you know what I mean? I would just try to find little tools and techniques. And it was less about relying on friends and networks. Because at that stage in my life, I was really busy. And I only had really my job and, and my husband and my first child. But, you know, I just sort of tried to find things within myself and just kind of go, okay, lighten up here. 